Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me, let's play some more Hearts Brian 4 as Mexico! Alright, so, uh, you may notice that the date has rewound to January 1st, 1936. Everything you saw before was ju just a dream, it's just a dream. This is my third try, um, so I want to tell you about my first try, okay? I didn't actually record my first try, because I just wanted to get a feel for how it would work, right? And what I was doing, is I tried to blitz victory points, to try to, to beat the United States before they could join the Allies. And... It didn't work well, because I kept getting cut off and encircled. However, I feel like the campaign as it were, as it, as it were, as it was, is uh, pretty unlikely to succeed, because they did join the, uh, they did, they joined, right? So, um, we have some issues, right? Like, if we continue the campaign as it was in the second try, then it'll never end. We will have suppression issues in the United States forever. Um, I won't be able to field a huge army until forever because we're only going to get like 40% of the production of all of these all these factories and stuff. Like I do want to 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 participate in the wars that are going to happen over in Europe, but um not to mention the fact that Hitler's going to kill everyone and get tons of works war participation and stuff and like it's just going to be messy. Like right? Okay, the whole goal what I want to do in this campaign is I want to beat the United States one on one before world tension hits 100%. So considering the fact that that I didn't make that happen. We're just going to start over and try it again. We're going to vary it up a little bit. We are going to try to blitz a little bit harder on these victory points. I think we want to make a few more cavalry. And I might, I'm thinking about this, I might even go down to 8 combat width instead of 10. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to do a better job with the, the front line, right? I got a little bit lazy. And with the Great Britain campaign, um, I had gotten used to having like 260 divisions of 20 combat width armies. And I would just make huge, huge front lines, and it was fine. You know, troops got where they needed to be, things were fine. But, like, what we should have been doing is using three separate division leaders, um, and then having short, shorter segments. I think what was happening is that our troops were getting relocated, or, uh, I keep calling it rebased, but that's not the right term. It's str strategically redeployed from, like, here, all the way over to here, and that still takes a long time, because it's a long ways, and it's an enemy, enemy territory, not, not great infrastructure, and it just, it wasn't... It wasn't working out, so I, I need to, I want to redo that, I want to do that better. The other thing is that, um, in the subreddit we had a great discussion about, um, how normally, I, I would say that if you have three, four, five research slots, uh, these definitely do pay themselves off very quickly, but it does make sense, if you think about it, um, that if you only have two research slots, these things really don't pay for themselves in any kind of speed, like, it, w it would take like five years for this thing to pay itself off. And I kind of just didn't even think about that and just went for these anyway. So there's a number of changes we're going to make. We're going to focus a little bit more on production and that kind of thing. Um, of course, we want weapons one like right away, I think. Um, the base research time is 150 for that. 150 for all of these. So anyway, um, and then the other thing I want to change up is I think we're going to try superior firepower doctrine. Um, I didn't really like... I don't know, I felt like the, the plus 10% speed didn't feel like it really did that much. And uh, my first attempt, I actually did use superior firepower for the soft attack and the defense. And uh, I feel like this is going to just work out better for us overall. So, let's give it another go. We'll see how we do. First thing we want to do is lean towards the... Uh, I guess it'd be left, right? Is it left? Are fascists considered left or right? Or is that just Democrats and Republicans? I don't really know. Uh, we could also get a bonus for Land Doctrine started right now. In 70 days. But, no, I think we want to do political efforts so we can hire the fascist guy. And then, uh, we immediately dive into that. We're not going to research Land Doctrine until we have the bonuses. I do think that we want to start what, start off going for... Probably, we want to get basic machine tools out of the way. So that the first bonus can apply to the concentrated industry. And we're not even really ahead of time on that, so... Yeah, I think we do that. I think we just go these two. We make guns. We could make artillery right away. I think we're going to want to do that. I think we do want to get an artillery thing started right away. And I think we want one of those factories to go towards that. We have enough tungsten for five of these. Um, but we probably want the infantry equipment to start coming out first. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so your factories at the start of the game can apparently have full-on 
total uh, production efficiency. So we should actually do this and not technically take it off of the basic infantry equipment. It's kind of interesting. All right, we'll start with three and then we'll get one of these. And then after we have one of those, queue up more. Let's start trading with uh, Germany again. I think seems fine for more of the things that we need. No, business, no divisions in basic training, free civilian factories. Uh, building anything other than military factories, I think, is is going to be a waste of time. There's just there's just nothing else that really makes any sense. I think. So we'll get started on those, and uh, we will go. <laughs> there was a funny discussion in one of the one of the videos about uh, how we keep on building, making the. That's why we need a wall between Mexico and the United States. This is not Mexican theater number one. This is a uh, U.S. border. And we'll probably end up doing the same thing we did before, which is to train. Okay. We start spending our, our experience bringing that down. The other thing we could do is um, I do think I was a little bit slow on declaring. So the advantage to going with eight combat with is that we'd still out, out, out fight their three... Infantry 6 combat with uh, garrison divisions, of which they still keep a ton. And it would allow us to have even more, even more divisions, which we could then use to potentially go faster. And I think what we need to do, here's where I think I was making a mistake, is that I kept trying to do these encirclements, right? And I think, I was reading on the subreddit today, I think that the AI does have some rudimentary anti, um, anti-pocketing mechanics, but they're too stupid to realize it if you do it on a slightly bigger scale. So like if instead of trying to pocket a single couple provinces, like one or two or three, if we just tried to pocket like a big area all at once, then the AI would just let us do it and then we could kill everything all at once instead of forcing these engagements uh, for just like an, a single regiment or two. I call, I call them regiments. I think they're supposed to be called divisions. I forget. Anyway. So, um, yeah. Hopefully you're not going to be upset with me for restarting. I, I, this is an iterative type process for me. Um, there's a very specific thing that I want to accomplish. And so we're going to, we're going to try to make that happen. So right now we're at 18 combat with, yeah, I think, I, th I really think that going down to eight and then having lots of support artillery would make a lot of sense. The other thing we could do is if you look at our focuses, remember we've got one bonus, two bonuses, Three bonuses, and if we go all the way down to, um, I think there was one more. No, is it is it just the first three that we get a, a discount for? Okay. Well, that's fine. Well, the first three in superior firepower are very good. Gives us soft attack for everything, all frontline battalions, which includes all of these, which is a lot of stuff. And then we get uh, Suppressive Barrage, which is an attacking strategy or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Leg Infantry gets a little bit less organization than this one does. But then all infantry, motorized, and mech get plus 20% defense. And then if we go down this way, I would go, I would go for these. Support Battalions get Soft Attack plus 25% twice. So we could potentially have our Soft Attack um, from the Support Artillery boosted by 50%. And that's, uh, and that's on top of, or I, actually, I don't think that's on top of. I don't think that uh, these guys count. Support artillery don't count as a frontline battalion. Yeah, no, they wouldn't. Or would they? Wait, I'm confused. I thought I just saw some support. Yes, support anti-tank is considered frontline, really. And then anti-tank and then engineering company, but no, no support. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. I mean, support... Support artillery should not be considered frontline. I mean, I think that that much is clear, right? All right. So playing on speed one is or four is <laughs> not gonna not gonna cut it. We gotta we gotta speed this up a little bit. I'm still disappointed that they don't have have more people available to choose from. It seems kind of unfair that some countries just have access to twice as many. And and to be honest, I'm running into. Uh, some of the exact concerns that I had about this game when I when I first played it back in the uh, pre-release pre-release pre beta and and everything I I said back then on my my pre-release footage video that uh, yeah, I have some serious concerns about the replayability of Hearts of Iron 4 and 
I think that it's a fair... S I'm, I don't think I was wrong. I, I think that, um, at least on a single player, on the single player side, um, there's some serious issues with this game. Okay, what if we kind of postpone becoming fascist just a little bit and don't go all the way down here? We could knock out two more ideas. I really want to get army effort for the land doctrine bonus so we can get started on that. And I want to get the equipment effort and I want to get the construction effort. Like, let me do this one first because in 72 days, we'll then be able to knock out the concentrated industry one. So that's a 20% boost to our three whole factories or whatever it is. Hey, three, three goes up to 3.6. Sounds good. And we hire the fascist supporter right now. Someone had commented that the, the higher ups may be better, but uh, I don't know. The last two times I've done it, I've not actually had any issues with the rebellion. Um, Spanish Civil War has already broken out. I mean, all I had to do to avoid it was pretty much just um, click a couple buttons. And apparently if you just wait until you have enough support, it'll, ev it'll eventually be peaceful. Okay, these guys are all trained. Cool. We should start getting some new guys trained. We have 5.97 army experience. Let's edit the regular division. Remove this guy. Save. Train and train. We're going to want to bring you down to a small number. And I think we want more cav. I think we want more cav than I built last time. For the speed. Not to mention... Pound for pound. 16 combat width versus 12 combat width. Breakthrough of 12 versus breakthrough of 16. Like, their breakthrough is just equal to their, the width. They have one breakthrough. Same thing for the calves. So they're equal on offense as far as breakthrough damage goes. Soft attack of 24 versus 18. Let's see, if they were equal size... Soft attack of 18. 18, 3, 120, and 12. 18, 3, 120, 12. It's the exact same stats. The only difference is... Uh, what? 150 HP, 60 organization, versus 150 HP and 70 organization. So Cav actually have more org than infantry do? Interesting. And they're just faster. Infantry equipment of 720 versus what would be 600. So they actually, they cost 20% more infantry equipment, and all you gain is a little bit of org and a little bit of movement speed. Okay. That's fair. Well, we definitely want to have some in training. Okay. I'm going to wait to pick up the next research until the this thing finishes, which will be two days after. So we'll have two days of stored research. You can store up to a month, not a big deal. Okay, we have industrial effort. Um, and then do we go for the construction effort? Or army effort? I think army effort. We'll sync up with uh, this one. It'll take 70 days to finish it. We can stockpile 20 days, and then just dump it all into the first land doctrine. Sounds good. Okay, and now we should have a bonus to our industry. And we will take concentrated industry for in 90 days, which is pretty awesome. And the fascist demagogue is actually doing pretty well on his own. I mean, I kind of feel like maybe maybe it's just not necessary to, to take both. Maybe we can switch to fascist just based on having a fascist demagogue. Well, let's find out. Let's see how long it takes to just have one guy. I think it's 40% that we'll need. We do we have enough points that we can actually change something now. We could get a, a land doctrine theorist. I think we're going to need that. We've done that guy last time. We're going to do him again. We need the daily army experience is what it is. Okay, now here's where we're just going to wait. 
Stockpile our research for 20 days. We can deploy units. Let's deploy units to Mexico City. And then we'll add these guys to the new theater, like we did before. I don't understand why you can't just rename it right here. Doesn't seem to make sense to me. And we're just waiting for army effort. I do think this is going to save us time. Okay. And equipment effort next, I think. Because we do need to get better guns. So yeah, 95 days. Uh, 20 days saved. We get all of our discounts. We get the 50% 50, 50 research bonus, taking it down to 150. Yeah. 95 days for that sounds great. Do it. And we almost have concentrated industry. We're still up to 15% popularity. Eventually we're gonna get that random event that raises popularity by 5%. I'd say if we can get if we can get converted to fascist by like mid 90s, 1937, then that would be pretty good. We're ahead of time here slightly. I don't think we want to start something that takes that many days. I think we just need to knock out regular infantry equipment. Get it started now. I know we're getting a bonus right now that's going to affect that, but I don't see waiting making any sense. Because all of the infantry equipment researches are base 150 days. So whether you take this or you take this, it doesn't matter. You're still saving the same number of days. I really did like, uh, at the end of episode 4 though, how we were able to get... Uh, you guys are training, yes? Okay, good. Oh, I can't I can't give them that because they don't actually have an order. Interesting. World tension's back down to 2%. That's great. We've got 10 army experience. Let's edit the vision again. We still don't have our second factory yet, do we? Is that even possible? Seriously? Wow. When the hell is this factory going to be done? September. Jesus. Takes forever. Well, we'll start making some artillery. Eventually we'll add those. Okay, equipment effort. Um, another bonus is probably not necessary. Another doctrine bonus probably is necessary, I would say. And we will sync that up probably with this one finishing. We already have superior firepower almost done. It'll probably be about time to start the concentrated industry again. Which is, I think, superior than the uh, the production efficiency line. Because it's just a flat bonus to your, all your factories, including civilian factories, I believe. Isn't it? I can't remember now. Let's, let's check. Factory output, yeah. So even our civilian factories should be producing more. Factory output of 5. Output from 4 factories. Export focus construction 1 plus 10%. Oh, that's construction speed. Okay, so no, it's not actually it's not actually affecting the factory output of your, our civilian factories. Interesting. Still, I think it's probably about time to get this started, yeah? 0.16 years ahead of time. Point one six. That's a sixth of a year, that's two months. Is there anything else we can knock out that would make more sense before we do that? a bonus to our... Let's knock that out real quick. Okay. I think we're going to keep on training these up about equal. I want to have a lot more cav this time. I want more speed. I want to have multiple cavalry divisions. I really wish they'd streamline this part of the game. I should just be able to have one... I don't. Need, I shouldn't have to do this. I should just be able to say, hey, if you're on the front line and you're not a regular, just train. And have only those guys train. I don't I don't understand why it needs to be more complicated than that. But it is. It don't, don't always be like it to, but it does. Or whatever the saying is. 
Okay, we have enough army experience to lower our combat width again. And I've got to make this decision here. Are we going to go down to 8? I'd say we go down to 8 on the infantry and maybe we stay at 10 on the cavalry and we focus on trying to use the cavalry for offense. Use our superior movement speed to our, our benefit. Another bonus to Doctrine. We're going to want this third one. On the other hand, just getting another military factory right now would also be really useful. More than a civilian factory or not? I almost, I almost don't even think that the research slot's really that important. Because like, if we're going to win this war, it's not going to be based on having research slots. It's going to be based on, yeah, let's just get some direct military factories, see if this works better for us. You can modify government again. Tanks don't matter, ships don't matter, aircraft don't matter, material uh, does matter. Infantry equipment designer. We just finished the bonus. Two small arms. We are doing a bunch of these. We're about to start to do a new one, so yeah, I think Industrial Concern makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. We have enough army experience again to lower the combat width. So yes, we go down to just 8 combat width, still superior to the infantry, to, to the US infantry. But on defense, they're still pretty good, 80 defense. So, hey, it doesn't matter, as long as they're just holding the line, they're fine. These guys, I think we do edit down to 10, and then we add the support artillery to the cavalry. And since they're usually going to be the ones on offense, they, they should get the support artillery first. I think that makes, makes sense to me. Okay, industry, concentrated industry, 20% factory output. Yes, 170 days, this is a long time. But we need it. I think we need it. And of course we want to switch over the infantry equipment right away to the better equipment. Since this is a significant increase in the amount of overall stuff. Um... Let's do one more factory on infantry equipment first and then we'll do one here. And then we'll queue up some more infantry equipment after that. As factories get done, we have a research slot available. Mm -hmm. Support equipment. Block, knock out the land doctrine. Since we only have the two research slots, we need to get these done. Fascist support is at 26%. We'll see, I don't know. We're, we're January of 37 now, so in six months, will we be fascist? Maybe. Civil war for fascism. Okay, um, I think that we don't do that. I don't think we I don't think we want to do civil war. I think we just let, let's unite the people slowly. I mean, we could switch to fascists right now, and we didn't need to, didn't need to do multiple focuses, two of them. That's 140 days. We wouldn't need to do, but I don't want to fight a civil war for it. That seems dumb. Let's lower the cavalry width. All right. Now I apologize because uh, you know it's fun when we're at war, but uh, I'm gonna take a break here and uh, try to get as much done in the next episode as I can. And uh, I have a feeling. That will be looking much better this time around. So, thanks for your support. Look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.